like to spend money. I call it investing in myself. That's what today's entire video is about. What's good, YouTube? How you guys doing today? Thanks for stopping by. If you're new here, let me introduce myself. My name is Paul. You can call me Paul the Fifth. Fifth. Recently, I unveiled tip number one from Secrets of My Personal Lockbox. And I sat down and I talked about not really secrets, but common sense and just taking that time to prep before you come to your actual studio session. And if you're getting ready to book a session, it gave you some things to think about. If you haven't watched it, you can go ahead and check it out here. So in today's content, I am diving into my personal lockbox again to share with you yet another secret from the personal lockbox. I can't tell you what it is just now because you gotta watch the show reel. Ready? Here we go. Yo, my name is Paul the Fear. Episode two, unveiling what's in my personal lock box. This one again is kind of not so much a secret, but common sense. Let's go ahead and dive in and see what we're talking about today. I know you can't see it, so I'll bring it to you. Investing in yourself. Over the last eight months or so, you've seen me investing in the studio, getting the new ProLine stands, which is my number one video, by the way. I've also got my gun video. I have got the video of my 18i20 interface. I have got a lot of videos of me putting together my gear, including my Apple M1 Max. If you haven't seen those, go ahead and check them out up here. Also, at the end of this video, if you like the content and you maybe learned something, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button down in the bottom there. For today's content, I have a question to start things off with. What is it that you do in life. Are you a teacher? Do you run a business? Maybe you drive Uber. Maybe you're a college student. Maybe you're a physician's assistant. Maybe you mow lawns. Maybe you're a city employee. No matter what it is that you do to earn a wage or a living, you have to have the tools of the trade. Am I right? I can't do stuff here with music when it comes to a music studio and I have instruments clients that play those musical instruments, uh, DIW to record those clients that play the musical instruments. See where I'm going here? So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I went plug in crazy. Like I've been saying, I can't afford a $1,500 day rate to go to Soundstage Studios, Blackbird Studios, you know, one of those huge big name studios in the city. But I've got my space here. I can recreate and emulate that sound. So I got the SSL bundle from the SSL website. It's like $15 a month, includes 11 plugins. And I got a couple other plugins that I got today that I want to show you and talk about. So let me stop yapping and get into this. All right, here we go. Do you know what time it is? It is time to go crazy. Yeah, so like I said just a moment ago, I can't afford a $1,500 day rate at studios like Blackbird Studio A or Soundstage Studio here in Nashville, but here's what I can't afford. I can pay $15 a month and get 11 plugins from SSL. That way it's a win-win situation. I pay a small fee, I get a lot of plugins and they're getting their money. So I'm excited to show you how I would turn a wimpy, you know, pretty basic, terrible sounding drum track with something that's gonna have some uh, grit and some punch and something that's gonna be in your face. That's right. So I'm gonna use this bundle and show you how to do that in conjunction with a couple other bundles here as well. All right, let me show you the process. SSL, Solid State Logic, the manufacturers of some of the best consoles in the entire world. If you've ever heard a song from maybe the late 70s, early 80s, possibly 90s, no matter what genre, maybe it be hip hop, alt rock, 
pop country most likely those songs have been either recorded or mixed on one of those consoles so here is a real brief history of ssl our history actually well not mine because i don't work for ssl but their history here they began in 1969 by colin sanders cbe the first console was done in 1976 the big breakthrough was in 1979 with the SSL 4000E series. So SSL is in, I believe, Oxford, England now, but in 1986, the company moved its headquarters to, I'm not sure how to say that. I'm just gonna let you look at it. I do not want to pronounce the name of that uh, city wrong there. But in the uh, 90s, more innovations here. Automation, which is cool, motorized faders. Now we have automation within Pro Tools and Logic. Within the world of digital, SSL developed screen sound and 8-track DAW. So in 2004 and 2006, the duality was introduced to the market. That's a pretty stellar console. I've had these fingers on that. Stick with me here in just a second. I'll tell you about more uh, consoles that I've been able to work on. So let me tell you about a few studios that I've had these fingers on. These are spirit fingers. Who remembers that movie? So when I was a student at SAE, we had Whitney Houston's SSL console. It was the J9000. For the most part, it was in pretty good shape. It had a couple of blemishes and things like that. But just knowing that I was in the same room and I got to put my hands on the console that was Whitney Houston's. That was just an amazing experience. Another place that I got to work with that had SSL consoles was I landed myself an internship at Soundstage Studio. So that included four studios, Backstage, Ronnie's Place, and I can't remember the other names of the studios, but they had four SSL consoles. Some were 64 channel, and they had a couple that were 80 channel SSLs. Those things were massive. My friend Bobby Holland at Pentaveret, he's a great engineer and producer here in town. I'm not sure how many channels his SSL has, but I think he's got either a G or an E. I have a Facebook friend. I haven't actually met this fine gentleman. He works for SSL and he's always posting about different studios that he's at. I think I would like to try to do an interview with him. I think his name is Phil Scholes. A few things that you should probably know about me is I like to eat a lot. I have really bad eyesight and my hair is always a mess when I come up in here for some reason. Um, it just happens to work out that way. But I like to spend money. Actually, I call it investing in myself. That's what today's entire video is about. So I'm investing in the SSL bundle. Let's go ahead and do that right meow. Okay, purchase. Okay, I gotta do it through Gobbler. Accept all cookies, select my plan. I think I got my password reset, so let me try to get this thing uh, going here. All right, purchase, accept the cookies, select plan. There it is. All right, Gobbler app. Oh my gosh, um, I can't do all of them at once. Okay, so I have to do each one of these individually. So uh, give me a second and I'll be right back. What's up? So I got some new drumsticks in the last two videos that I made. I broke the same pair of sticks. I actually broke them twice in two different videos. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and uh, jam out to this little song here. I hope you like it. Right now it's gonna be probably just pretty raw, not sounding too great with the close mics and room mics. But in the second part, I'm gonna show you how I use those SSL plugins to really beef things up and make them uh, and clap. Yeah, and sound hard. So, all right, here we go. Let's jam out. I'm gonna use my wireless keyboard. So I don't have to go eight feet over there, run back here, hope I make it in time. So here we go.
dark and ominous clouds here looking like we're probably gonna get rained on. same porch well let me get back inside before the lightning finds me coming to you from the home front as you just saw there's a bad storm rolling through so i didn't feel like being at the studio with uh thunder and lightning and a lot of electrical equipment was a good place to be let me show you what my idea is on this so let's go ahead and get to it we are in yet another day of filming this video some things have changed this has gone away and so has the gray up here. Things are looking a little brown now. I'm trying to feel a little more youthful. I know it's kind of hard to say that when right here on this track it's really enlarged, but I did say previously in this video, I have a hard time seeing. So my plan is to, on this part of the video, tell you what I did to make this mix stand out, feel punchier, and just overall be a better rounded mix. So I'm using about four different plugins here. Like I said, this video is about investing in yourself. I just got the SSL bundle from the SSL website. I'm using a combination of SSL plugins. I've got one from the plugin Alliance bundle that I have, it's the mega bundle. And they've got three different SSL emulations. And I'm happy to say that my Waze plugins are now working on my M1 MacBook Pro. I'm using some of those, I'll show you them here in a moment. And on my master fader, I have a brand new plugin that I'm using here as well. It's a brick wall limiter from IK Multimedia. Let's go ahead and dive into this mix. These first four channels, they are my room mics. Everything is pretty consistent here. So what I did was I'm using an SSL plugin from the bundle. It is the Native X EQ2. A little roll off here at about 30 Hertz, a boost at 71 for that kick drum. A little boost here in the low mids at 205 for the uh, snare drum. And then right here, some mid range pulled out right here. 2.6K, a little boost for the attack and punch there for the kick and snare. And right up here at about 6K, I've got a nice shelf that is getting the cymbals. And like I said, this is all consistent here from these four tracks. Let's take a look at the kick drum. So the kick in right here, I'm not actually using this, i uh, showing you the EQ curve. I've got the X EQ2 here just to show that representation. Rolled off at 30 Hertz, a boost at 102, mid range pulled out and right here at about 3.45K, I've got a boost to get that punch and attack. So I'm using a plugin here from the Plugin Alliance bundle. It's the SSL 4000E. Each plugin is set up a little differently. This one here with the Plugin Alliance, the gain is up on the top. This is rolled off here at about 20 hertz. I've got my boost at 75, my mid range pulled down, and I've got my boost at about 4.4K. I use this one here because I really like the dynamic section and the gate just worked really smoothly uh, so I can let that kick drum just really shine. Moving over to my kick out, I've got a Solomon low freak mic. It captures low frequencies. I've got this pretty aggressively rolled off. I've got uh, rolled off to about 304 hertz and a pretty nice boost at about 46. On my snare top here is the EQ curve rolled off at about 39, almost 40 hertz, a little boost at 70. There is a real nasty ring, so I pull that out, is about 140 hertz, a little bit of a dip at 1K, and then a nice little boost at 4K to get that shine and attack on that snare drum. What I did was use the plug-in Alliance SSL 4000E again. Here's the gain, things are rolled off there. The little boost on the low end, 145 hertz, mid range to pull out, and the boost at 4K. Again, I really like the dynamic section. This gate was really nice and smooth. Moving along to the snare bottom, right here, here's the EQ curve. Now you notice this is a little different. I actually have a nice low shelf right there at about 100 hertz. 
I pulled out that ring again here this is about 220 pulled out a little dip at 1.5 and then a nice boost at about 4k to emulate that I use the SSL 9000J now this is the plug-in alliance version of things now this is the console we had at SAE and the gain is right up here things are rolled off to about 20 Hertz my boost is at about 100 low mid-range pull out I've got that boost at about 4K. And again, I really found that the dynamic section worked really nicely on the gate. Taking a look at our toms. Right here, this is just showing you the EQ curve on the SSL plugin. It's the Native X EQ2. I've got things rolled off at about 50 hertz. On tom one, it's my rack tom, it's a 12 inch. I've got the fundamental boosted at 99 hertz. Pretty aggressive dip at 1K and then a nice little boost right here at about 4K. Emulating that, I am using the Waves SSL plugin here. This is the SSL channel strip. This is set up here where your gain is at the bottom. Things are rolled off at about 50 Hertz. I've got the boost at 90 here, mid-range pulled out, and then the little boost at 4K. And the reason I chose to use the Waves plugin on my toms was I really like the gating. It really had a really nice smooth release and it really let me block out everything else but really capture the tone of my toms. Everything's pretty consistent on the other two. However, the fundamentals are a little different. On my tom two, it's a 14 inch tom, so the fundamentals at 81 hertz, a little lower. And on tom three, it's a 16 inch four tom, the fundamental is at 70. So the little boost there. From a hi-hat left, here's the EQ curve. I've got things rolled off right at about 400 hertz. I am using the SSL channel strip here from Waves. I've got everything rolled off here at about 300 hertz. The hi-hat right, same thing. Actually, this one's a little higher, rolled off to about 1K. Uh, this one using the SSL channel strip here again. My overheads, I'm using the SSL channel strip from Waves. Same thing here, rolled off to about 70. Here's my gain. Nice little boost at about 116. Pulled some mid-range out, and then I've got a uh, little bell at about 8K. On my drum bus, I've got the same plug-in here. My EQ curve on the SSL Native X EQ2. Things are rolled off at about 30 hertz, nice little boost at 74. Pull some mid-range out. I've got a little boost at 3K for that punch and attack on the snare and kick. And we've got a little boost up here at about 8K. That's for the cymbals. Check this out. I do a lot of parallel compression. Any great mix engineer that uses an SSL is a fan of the bus compressor. Waves has made a great emulation of this. I want to show you a preset that I found. This is called Punch. Let's check it out. Very cool on that punch. Let me show you what I did on the SSL bus compressor. So my threshold is set down here at negative 15. My makeup gain is at about seven. I've got my release set at about 1.2. 2.1 ratio and here's our rate. Check this out. This thing slams. Yeah. Man, that thing hits hard. Okay, on my stereo out. Couple things I'm using here. I've got the SSL G channel. What I did was a little roll off at about 60 Hertz my gains at Unity, little boost at 75, pull out the mid-range, and then a little boost at about 3.6K. And here is where my brick wall limiter comes in. This is from IK Multimedia. It's a TR5 brick wall limiter. I've got my input set to about 1.3 dB and my output ceiling is negative three. So what that means is a brick wall limiter, kind of what it sounds like, a brick wall. You're running into a brick wall. At that negative 3 dB spot on my master, it's not going to let any audio pass that threshold. So that's going to allow right here for a little volume boost, 
but it's not gonna clip or anything like that. To monitor things with, since we're talking about SSLs, here's a couple of plugins you should know about. Waves has created some studio room emulations. This is one of my favorites. It's Studio 3 from Abbey Rhodes. What you can do is use headphones. I happen to use right here the Sennheiser HD 280 Pros. You simply find your headphones, you click on that. You can choose a near field, a mid field, and far field monitoring situation. You can click this here, go all the way around. That's pretty dope. It really allows you to get an emulation of that specific room. And a new one that I use to monitor this mix here, this is the CLANX, Chris Lord Algae, one of the best known top mix engineers out in LA, a beautiful Tarzana as he might say. So this here gives you his subs, his mains, and then he's got a boom box. Again, I chose my Sennheiser HDs. What you wanna do on these plugins is always put it at the very bottom, at the last part of your master fader. So when you bounce your files, you wanna make sure you have that turned off. So real quick, let's hop on the internet. On to Safari, I've got the Solid State Logic website. Here's the bundle, it includes all of these here. A link for these is gonna be in the description. Here's my SSL 4000 plugin bundle. Here's the master bus compressor. Here's the CLA in X. Here is the Studio Road, or here's the Abbey Road Studio 3. And here is the link for the IK Multimedia brick wall limiter. Now that I've showed you the plugins I've used to mix this to make things a little more punchy and brighter and in your face, let's go ahead and check out the final mix. today I'm on my porch but it looks like we're about to get some bad weather so I'm just gonna come in a little closer and say thank you so much for watching if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and hit that red subscribe button right there give me those thumbs up and you know what else to do thanks for watching all right guys my name is Paul Fifth.